By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have something special. It is Tuesday, so that means more action from the Reprint Masters, the Reprint Tournament, where you're only allowed to play with cards printed in revised 4th edition and Chronicles. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the finals. And in the finals, we're actually going to look at a deck we haven't seen before in these series. And we're going to look at the deck of Gideon, which is a zoo deck. It's red, it's green, and it's white. It's very spectacular. And he is taking on a player that I actually played in the group stages. It's Matt Harper, and he's playing with a Disco Troll deck with a lot of blue. And we also saw him in action in the semifinals where he beat Baron Nick. Now, if you've missed any of the earlier episodes, don't worry, there is a playlist. I'll put it in the description below. And there you can just look back at all the other uh, episodes starting all the way in the group stages when I was still in the tournament and uh, you can see me play with my Dragon Search deck but that's not what we're going to do today. Today we're going to look at these two fine players who made it all the way to the finals. Remember we started this with 45 players so I mean Gideon and Matthew already a big congratulations to you guys for actually getting this far into the tournament but of course only one of you can actually win it and the winner will get a Tim the Enchanter altar um, made by Park Goldfield, by the way. That's the artist that made the altar for me in 2020. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for this. Um, as always, I'm going to go to the deck text first. I'm going to do that first. Now, if you want to skip this, check the description below and there you will find several timestamps, right? One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there. That will take you straight to the game so you can kind of skip the deck tech action. And also, by the way, the description is very useful if you want to know more about the rule set because in this uh, specific tournament, uh, for example, you're allowed only to play with one Mishra's Factory and also um, a Mana Burn is real in this format. So take that into account as well when you're looking at these games. Now, like I said, if you want to know more, check the description below. There's also a link to the tournament website where you can find out all the ins and outs of this tournament and all the lovely deck lists, by the way. So if you're kind of into budget brewing and old school and you want to see what works and what doesn't work, maybe the decks that are played in this tournament are a great starting point for you. Okay, now without further ado, we're going to start with the deck decks. And I'm actually going to start, let me take a look here at how the players are seated. I'm going to start with the deck of Matthew, the Troll Disco Brew. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Matt. So this is Matt's iteration of Troll Disco. And I kind of feel like I know this deck by now because I've played against it in the group stages. I've seen it last week in the semifinals. And, you know, I kind of know this deck. And I'm really impressed with what the color blue is doing to this uh, uh, Troll Disco brew. You know, because what Troll Disco wants to do is, is it's pretty much a control deck, right? It wants to control the board with an Evanerals disc. The problem of an Evanerals disc is it comes into play tapped, it's vulnerable. It's a whole turn, it's vulnerable, right? The cool thing about counter magic is you can keep enough mana up. You can create a situation in the game where you can cast your Evanerals disc and then you can protect it with counter magic. And once it's untapped, it is so versatile because you can use it in response. It, 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 it's not like a Chaos Orb where you say, I want to activate it and your opponent says, in response, I'll disenchant. No, when you activate an Evanerals disc, it's on, its effect is on the stack, right? No matter if it gets disenchanted, whatever, its effect is on the stack. So there's nothing you can do uh, as an opponent once it's actually untapped, it can always work. So that is that is just really cool about the Nav's disc. And if you can protect it with counter magic, it's just solid. Another thing that he can protect with his counter magic or his four Setch Trolls. Setch Trolls, of course, have regeneration that makes it really tough to deal with them, especially in old school. Like Terror is a great answer. We see that in Matt's deck. I know it's not a Gideon's deck because he's not playing with black. Another great answer is Swords to Plowshares, right? Swords kills it. And I do know that Gideon plays with Swords, but Swords is always uh, also quite easy to counter with the Spell Blast, right? Spell Blast is one blue and, 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 and one to counter swords. So I think the counter magic in Matt's deck are really about protecting his own threats and not as much as um, countering the threats of his opponents. So it's more about protecting his own resources, really. I'm not saying he's never ever going to counter any threat of, of Gideon. Of course, when the time's right, he's going to do that. But... I think the main idea of these of the counter magic in this deck is to protect the discs 
and a little bit to protect the trolls. And then if we look at the rest of the deck, he's got answers for creatures in this deck, right? He's got four bolts, which I think are going to be absolute all-stars against Gideon. Gideon's playing with a lot of smaller creatures. One red, three damage to any target, that's golden. Savannah Lions, Elvis Archers, all those creatures kill, kill, kill on the end step of Gideon's turn. Untap, he's got all the mana again. You know, it's just an easy, easy fix. Also, Terror here is going to be very powerful. Instant speed, creature removal, one black and one. You cannot kill a creature that is black or an artifact creature. Well, I don't think that Gideon is playing with a lot of artifact creatures and he's not playing with the color uh, black. So we also see two more terrors in the sideboard. They will definitely be boarded in after game one. So, I mean, overall, it's a strong deck. It's made it to the finals. And I mean, I, I, think, I think Matthew, you really have a shot of, of winning this tournament in, uh, in, in the finals here against Gideon. Now let's take a look at the deck of Gideon. And here we see the deck of Gideon. Now I'm really looking forward to see this deck in action because actually I haven't seen it in action uh, in this tournament yet here at the Reprint Masters, but it made it all the way to the final. So it has to be a really solid deck. And looking at this picture, man, it looks, it looks dangerous. Look at the creature base. Four Savannah Lions, four Curd Apes, four Elvish Archers, four Urnum Jins, two Sarah Angels. We're talking about 18 creatures and most of them or one or two mana drops. So, I mean, he, this deck is gonna get out of the gates. And then when we look at the rest of the deck, we see Giant Gross, we see Swords to Plowsiers, which is almost a weak card in this deck, right? Because you're giving your opponent life. But of course, it's great removal. So we see Swords to Plowsiers. We see four bolts that can be used again as damage as well. We see Disintegrate, two Fireballs. We see a fork, and that fork can be a killer also. I wonder, by the way, if uh, if Gideon can succeed in using the fork to fork a counterspell and by that way countering a counterspell. That would be great fun. I mean, fork by many is called red's counterspell, right? Also being, uh, in this case, two red and counterspell being two blue. Uh, so, there, you know, there are some similarities there, but I find it really nice to see fork. It's just such a cool situational card that can be so good, so good and, and sometimes can be just sitting in your hand you're like why am i playing this but it can just be so good sometimes but i think what what Gideon wants to do here and and the reason that he's for example not playing with lunar elves he's really playing on curve what he wants to do is every single turn tap his mana sideways play out a creature threat and attack right so turn one savannah lines turn two elvish archers turn three maybe curd ape and an elvish archer right turn four he's got four mana let's play out an urnum Turn five, if he has it, let's play out a Sarah. If he doesn't, let's attack, play some giant gross, play some direct damage. I mean, this deck wants to do business. This is not a deck that is gonna sit back and wait for it to happen. No, this deck is gonna make it happen, right? So it's really up to Matt to try to get under the pressure that this deck is probably gonna put on him from turn one. So this looks like a really, really tricky deck to play against. I do think if if Matt is able to stabilize, for example, play um, an, an earthquake at the right moment, play some terrors and bolts to make, make to kind of stop the bleeding, right? And then get that disc out, protect the disc with a counter spell, untap and destroy the board. Okay, then he's in business. But if he can't, for whatever reason, I mean, if he takes 10 damage at the start of the game, he don't can actually burn him out later in the game, you know? So it's, it's really risky to play against this deck. And I understand that this deck made it all the way to the finals. And and like I said, I'm really looking forward to see this deck in action. Maybe a really nice thing uh, uh, to know about this deck picture or the four Kurt Apes. As you can see, they're altered and they were actually a prize that I gave away at the first tournament that I ever organized. And that was a revised only side event. So it was at a main old school tournament. And then um, if you got kicked out and you didn't make it to top eights, um, you could actually join my side event and you could play and the rules of the side side event were simple You could only play with cards printed in revised So it was a revised only duel and uh, the winner of that duel got these uh, beautiful Altered Kurt Apes. So it's really cool Gideon that you put these Kurt Apes in your deck I really appreciate it. I like it man, and I'm looking forward to see this uh, these apes in action I'm also really really looking forward to that fork in your deck as well. Okay this oh by the way Look at the Elder Dragon in the sideboard. Isn't that badass? That it, Gideon, I love that, man. I love that, man. Fantastic detail. So this is the deck of Gideon. We've seen the deck of Matt. Now let's go to the finals of the Reprint Masters. 
Game number one of the Reprint Masters final. Who's gonna win this? Matt on the right, starting with a Taiga, and Gideon on the left, starting with a Savannah. And um, yeah, there is a Mistress Factory pass turn. Mistress Factory restricted, by the way, in the Reprint Masters. You can only play with one. And he's animating it attacking. That is pretty risky. There we see a Shatter taking care of the factory. It does kind of show the intention of Gideon and what he wants to do with his deck. He wants to attack, attack, attack. He wants to play very aggressive. There we see land drop number four from Matt. And a basic mountain and a pass turn here. Wonder if Matt can maybe find a Setch Troll. Ooh, he's not even finding a land here. Passing turn. There we see basic force makes it four, casting an Urnum Jin four five creature from Arabian Nights. He can start swinging in with that. Will we see a disc? There's the Nevenerals disc. Of course, it is risky because there's no counter magic up for Matt. So let's see. First, an attack for four is going to drop to sixteen. And okay, he's going to play a Curdape. So I assume he has an answer for the disc. There's a Disenchant, exactly, so it's got an answer for the disc. And that's of course difficult because Matt's playing with a lot of counter magic, but counter magic is not as good when you're under pressure. There's one of those bolts to take care of the Curde, but a good reply here by Gideon response, I should say, casting that Giant Grove, giving it plus three, plus three, kind of working like a counter spell for the bolt. So it's not looking good for Matt here. It's gonna drop to 10. Wow, that is low. He really needs to find an answer, at least for the Urnum here or else this game could be over very, very quickly. And he's rearranging his mana, tapping to playing a Terror on the Urnum. So the Urnum's gone, and passing turn here. So, so far Gideon's kind of doing what he wants to do, but I have to say he's not playing that many creatures. He could now possibly play out a Sarah Angel. Is he gonna play a Giant Growth on the Curd Ape? It is risky, of course. No, he's playing a Savannah Alliance. So he's playing this in his second main. And he's playing another Savannah Alliance. Ooh, if Matt can now draw his Earthquake, he can do some serious business. Earthquake for three, annihilate the board. Earthquake for one, ooh, interesting. Interesting, does that mean he's got a Terror for the, yeah, Terror for the Curd Ape? And here we really see what I talked about in the deck tech as well. Matt's got a lot of answers, especially to creatures that are not that big because he's got Earthquake. He's got Lightning Bolts and the Terrors, of course, are ideal. Here we see Regrowth over a Terror, playing a Terror again on the Urnum. I think that's really important because look at the life total of Matt. Matt's on seven. There we see Regrowth, Urnum, playing Urnum. Wow. And again, the threat is on the table. There we see a Recall, so he's probably going to get back the Terror again. Going to discard Wheel of Fortune. Ooh, that is interesting. Probably doesn't want to play Wheel because realizing he's just going to put more threats into Gideon's hand. Another Urnum. He keeps on playing threat after threat after threat. And we kind of saw that in his deck list as well. And here we see a Disintegrate on the Urnum. Wow. So, so far Matt has been able to get rid of all the creatures. But there we see a Sarah Angel. Man, if you're Matt, you must be going crazy. And I think the big thing. Oh, Shivan Dragon. I love this. Shivan Dragon, Sarah Angel together on the board. What more can you wish for? Well, Gideon maybe wants to get a source here. I mean, he is, yeah, there's a source. The problem again is he does gain six life though, goes up to 13. Uh, the whole problem for this whole match for Matt has been that he's been under pressure all the time and he hasn't been able to really keep his counter magic up to protect uh, his creatures, to protect his Nevenerals discs. And that's been the main issue for him here. There we see a demonic tutor. I wonder what he's going to tutor for. Hmm. I mean, it really depends on that one card in hand, right? Ooh, we see a fork. Wow, a fork on the demonic tutor. This is so sweet. So he's forking it. I wonder if Matt can counter. Well, he was looking at that one hand, but he's not countering. So the way this works is that now Gideon's Demonic Tutor resolves first, right? So he's first going to look for a card and then Matt can look for his card. And uh, But in this case, I think because Gideon isn't playing with any counter spells, right? I think that Matt can just continue with searching for his card with Demonic Tutor. But we first see Gideon kind of looking, uh, looking up his card. And this is kind of insane, isn't it? Like... A fork. This is why I like fork. A fork on a demonic tutor. You you don't expect that to happen. And there you go. So there goes Matt. So the first demonic tutor of Gideon's side has resolved, and now Matt's gonna look for his card. 
crazy stuff here at the finals of the reprint masters and uh, i mean things things are looking good for hidon after getting rid of that sheevan dragon and i really wonder what card matt's gonna look up I mean, it's got to be difficult. Okay, looking up a disc, if he did. But, I mean, that's risky, though. Again, no mana to protect it. Attacking for four. Going to drop to five. Play a bolt. Going to go to two. Play a wheel of fortune. Okay. <laughs> I'm a bit surprised that maybe, you know, Gideon didn't go for, like, an X spell, for example. And he's finding another bolt. Okay, that's it. Wow, wow, what a first game. This promises to be a really good final. And now both players are going to dive into their sideboards. And uh, man, I have to say the deck of Gideon is impressive. It's just, it's so, it's so aggressive. He's got so many creatures, you know, it's crazy. Okay, so we'll let these players sideboard and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two at the reprint master. So Gideon's up one game. Look at that. Matt's taking a mulligan. That is not a great start because he's already down one game. He has to win this one to keep an eye on the prize. Remember, it's a best of three at the finals of the Reprint Masters. And no one drop by Gion. This surprises me a little bit. I believe he plays with eight one drops and four two drops, but he cannot find either of them. And there is another land. Not much happening from Gideon's side. Not much happening from Matt's side. They're just building up their land base here at the early stages. There we see a Setch Troll from Matt. So that's something of a threat. Taking a damage from his own city. Responded with a quick Swords to Plowshares. And there is a force. Will we see an Urnum Jin here by Gideon? No, he's just passing turn. There we see a Blue Swords and a Pass. So both players really not being able to cast anything yet except for that Swords and that Setch Troll. And let's see what Gideon's going to do here. And casting a Savannah Alliance. And Matt, is he allowing it? He's playing a quick terror over it. And there's on the ground C. And terror, of course, I mean, that's a good answer. But yeah, you'd rather want to have a, a lightning bolt for your lines and a terror for this beautiful Sarah Angel. Tapping four, probably. Ooh, control magic. That is sweet. Taking over the control magic. So these came from the sideboard of Matt. So he did decide to board them in. And uh, let's see what Gideon can do here. I believe it's a beta control magic, by the way. Or perhaps even an alpha. It's hard to see the corners from a distance. Let's see what uh, what Gideon can do here. If he has a disenchant, I'm sure he would have played it already. Tapping five, another Sarah. Ooh, disintegrating. This is great news for Matt. This is what you want to do, right? Because now it's a two for one. So Gideon has lost a disintegrate and a Sarah Angel. Two great cards to one control magic. And here we see a Neveneral's Disc. And I really like this line of play from Matt as well. To kind of say, you know, if you have a disenchant, use it on my control. And then I still have my disc in safety. And there is an Elfish Archer. It's the first one we've seen in this match. He's playing with a full play set of them. One green and one to cast Beautiful Art by Anson Maddox. And he's got First Strike. And what is he going to do? Playing a Regrowth on a Terror. Okay, so he's really going for safety here. And he's going to play a Terror on the Elvish Archers. Interesting. So he's basically saying, I don't want to pop the disc for that Elvish Archers. And instead he's choosing to get back the Terror. Ooh, here we see another Demonic Tutor. Not a fork this time from Gideon like we saw in game number one. I wonder, he's probably going to look up a Setch Troll, right? Because he can just regenerate that. Or maybe a Brain Geyser to refill his hand. Brain Geyser would be good too. And untapping. And Gideon not doing much because of that Neveneral's disc. Doesn't want to feed to the disc. I think ideally... Ooh, yeah, we're going to see, I think, a Brain Geyser here. No! Solkanar, the Swamp King. 5-5. Five, five. That is pretty sweet. Really nice to see this beautiful creature here in the finals. It's a 5-5 five, five Swamp Walker. And every time you play a Black Spell, you also gain one life. Also, when your opponent casts a black spell, by the way, but that's not relevant because Gideon is not playing with any black sources. There we see one bolt, and there we see a second bolt, and a counter spell on the second bolt. Great news for Matt. Because of the counter spell, that other bolt is now useless, so Gideon just wasted a bolt. So it looks like Matt's in a pretty good position. I think if you're Gideon, you're looking for a source right now, or a fireball, that works too. So both of these decks just having a lot of answers and a lot of creatures. 
especially the deck of Gideon, of course, having most of the creatures. And there we see a Brain Geyser. Yeah, I think the Brain Geyser is probably what he looked up with uh, with the Demonic Tutor. I mean, it's just great. I mean, drawing five cards, refilling your hand like that, that's amazing. And I think it's it's the right decision from, from Matt to look up that card with the Demonic Tutor. Card advantage is such a big deal. Tapping three for a set troll. And now he has that combination and he's got enough mana to protect his um, Nevenerals disc with a counter spell. So now Gideon is really in trouble. He's got to find a way to draw into some more cards, actually. He's got, I believe, three cards in hand. And I mean, this is, this is going to be really tough for him. This is what Matt wants to do. He's got more cards. He's got the right tools on the table. He's got probably has counter magic in hand to protect what he's got on the table. Right now, it would be good for, for Gideon, for example. Ooh, yeah, regrowth. Yeah, regrowth's good, I guess. Takes back a disintegrate. Casts a disintegrate for three on the set. Counterspell. And this is that kind of protecting what you have scenario that I talked about in the deck deck as well. As, 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 as soon as, as Matt has got enough mana open to end cast the disc and cast a troll and have enough lands to protect uh, what he plays with the counterspell, he's pretty much solid, right? And that's exactly what we're seeing right now. Swinging in for three, Gideon's going to drop to 12 here. There is a bolt, it's going to drop to nine. There is a bolt, it's going to drop to six. That means he's now going to drop to three. Does he have another one? Another bolt. Okay. Wow, man, you had a lot of bolts there, Matt. Anyway, <laughs> this, uh, this second game goes to Matt. Well done. And that means we're going for game number three to find out who's going to win the finals of the Reprint Masters. Game number three, the decider who's going to win the Reprint Masters. We'll know after this game, man. Ah, oh, exciting stuff. The winner gets a really sweet altered Sheevan Dragon. And there's a Savannah Lines and, of course, a Tim the Enchanter altar as well. So that's a Protocol Sorcerer completely altered to look like Tim the Enchanter. And let's look at the match now. Matt's starting with a second underground C, so he can counter now. And there we see that Savannah line. So finally an aggressive start by Gideon. This is something I expected in game one and two, but still not more creatures than that. And there we see a Demonic Tutor. And um, yeah, I mean, Matt keeps finding those tutors. That must be pretty nice. Maybe he's even gonna just find the land because it looks like he's, he's a little bit dried up. Although maybe he just wanted to first play Demonic see if there were any responses and then play a land. So he's playing a Volcanic Island. And yep, there is a Bolt on the line. So that's a good answer. You really want to use your Bolts for that. You don't want to use your Terrors. Terrors can be good for the Urnum Jins and the Sarah Angels. And Gideon just passing turn here. Wow. Missing a land drop. And okay, that's a land from the top, but not finding an Urnum or any threat. This is not what Gideon's deck wants to do. His deck wants to play creatures. There we see a Spell Blast on the Curd Ape. Curd Ape just being one red, that means that the Spell Blast is just a blue and one. And there's a Red Elemental Blast on the Spell Blast, but a Spell Blast on the Red Elemental Blast. Okay, <laughs> pretty sweet, man. Oh, that's funny. Two Spell Blasts to counter one uh, Curd Ape. But of course, it's also good news for Matt that that Red Elemental Blast is out of the way. And there we see an untap of that Navanerals disc. And this is kind of what Matt wants, right? An untapped disc, to kind of have that control. He now has a Mishra's Factory that he can use to swing in with. There is a Swords, though, as an answer. Will there be a Counterspell? There is a Counterspell, another Swords. Again, this is not ideal for Gideon using two Swords on the 2-2 creature, knowing that Matt plays with Setch Trolls. Remember, Setch Trolls have regeneration. You can't get rid of them with Lightning Bolts. So you really want to use your swords on that and your lightning bolts or maybe even your disenchants on the Mishra's Factory. Ooh, a Brain Geyser. This is huge for Matt here. He was already in a good position with that untapped disc and now he's going to draw into loads of cards. If he can find a Setch Troll in there, he can just play out the Setch and he can kind of do what we saw him do in, um, in, game, uh, in game number two here. Are we going to see a Counterspell on the Curd Ape? No Counterspell. I wonder if we're going to see a, uh, a set troll here. I'm kind of expecting it. Tapping three. There is the set troll. Remember, one red and two to cast. And there is a quick sorts 
Does he have counter magic to protect it? I believe so. Oh, Terror on the Curd Ape. Wow, I was expecting Matt to counter here. Terror on the Curd Ape. Kind of clearing the board here. This is good news for Gideon. There is an Urnum Jin. Again, not a counter spell. And remember, Matt just played that Terror on the Ur on the, on the Curd Ape. Passing turn. Of course, he still has an Evan Earl's Disc. He's going to take the damage first. Still on lots of life. Going to drop to 17. Nothing to worry about here on the side of Matt. But it... it it's not as great as it was. Preferably, you would want to play another Satch Troll here. Taking more damage. Doesn't want to use the disc still. And of course, for Gideon, this is fine. He's like, you know what? I'm just going to keep attacking, not playing out anything else. I'm winning as is. He's going to attack again. And now Matt is deciding to pop the disc. But he's already taken 8 damage. And there we see a Savannah line. We do see a Lightning Bolt on the Lion. Wow, I thought after the Brain Geyser of Matt that he would have the upper hand, but that uh, scenario kind of changed here. And now both players having nothing on the board except for a lot of lands, especially Matt there. Seems that he's drawing into a lot of lands. Passing turn. So he's on 13, Gideon's on 19, and it's 1-1. One, one. So the winner of this match will win the Reprint Masters. Here we see a Circle of Protection red from Gideon. And there is a Sarah Angel. Are we going to see a Counterspell? No Counterspell. Maybe Control Magic? I do know he boarded those in. Going to tap four. Control Magic. Okay. So this is good news here for Matt. And he plays an Evan Earl's Disc. And this is great news. Like Even if Gideon has a Disenchant, of course he's then going to Disc to Control, but he'll still have... Yes, he's going to Disc to Control, but Matt still has an Evan Earl's Disc. Pass turn. And I mean, it, it's not that bad for Matt because he gets to destroy and the COP Red and the Sarah Angel. Because remember, in game two, Matt won with Burn, basically. He burned him out uh, with the Lightning Bolts, I believe. And there we see the activation. Makes sense. Doesn't want to take more damage. He's already on 13. Doesn't want to drop below the 10 here. Gideon, of course, having access to some direct damage as well. And tapping a lot, huge fireball. That's two, four, six, seven. Fireball of seven going from 13 all the way to six. Wow. This is risky business. This is bad news for Matt. Looking at his cards. Okay, okay. Is he going to do a fireball in return? Fireball in return. Oh, ho, ho. You can fireball me, I can fireball you. Okay, so now Gideon's on eight, Matt's on six. Is this gonna be decided on burn? There's the first bolt. Are we gonna see a second bolt to win the tournament here for Gideon? Win the reprint masters. I guess not, because we don't see a tap of a mountain. What is he gonna do? Three life points for Matt. What is he gonna do? Four cards in hand on the side of Matt. Wow, there is a Wheel of Fortune. Ooh, this is risky business. Yeah, only lands for Matt. I kind of had that idea. I guess with the Brain Geyser Matt, you only found lands. And there is the Bolt. Counterspell on the Bolt. Regrowth Counterspell. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. That is crazy. That is crazy. Wow, so this was it. This was the reprint Masters. And what a beautiful final Thank you, Gideon, and thank you, Matt, for delivering these sweet plays. I mean, Fork on Demonic Tutor, great, man. And also thank you to all the patrons and channel members for participating in this tournament. Like I said, we had 45 wizards battling it out. Gideon, you get this cool Sheevan Dragon, and also you'll get the special uh, Timmy, the Tim the Enchanter altar uh, sent to you as well. Whenever you win a Timmy Talks event, you get one of these altars. There are only 25 made and there will not be made anymore so it's just going to be those 25 and now you own one of those unique altars and actually the shivan dragon altar uh is made by frank by the way he's also a patron on the channel okay wow Whew. thank you uh for watching uh, the tournament here on timmy talks and uh, and of course also for watching another episode another video right here on timmy talks if you like what you see 
uh, what you saw, um, you can do three things to help the channel. They're completely free. And the first thing is just to uh, press the thumbs up button, a button, like this video, it really helps a lot. And the other thing you can do is uh, leave a comment, you know, spam that comment section. Also feel free to ask a question, to give your opinion about the decks or, or, or a specific play, you know, be polite of course, but feel free to do that. And um, if I can reply, if I can answer your questions, I definitely will. I will sometimes also ask the players to have a look and see if there are any questions that maybe they can answer. Um, yeah, so those are two things that you can do. And the third thing that you can do to help the channel that's completely free is of course become a subscriber. So if you're new to Timmy Talks, welcome to the channel. I hope you've enjoyed this first video. And uh, yeah, you can hit that subscribe button. That really, really helps because it shows YouTube that you appreciate the content that I make. And that means that YouTube is gonna put my videos into feeds more of more uh, YouTube users that are interested in MTG content, right? So. All those things help and there's one other thing you can do and that's actually becoming a patron of Timmy Talks and by becoming a patron you're also supporting the channel financially and you're basically keeping Timmy Talks afloat. Now you can do that by visiting the Timmy Talks Patreon page and um, yeah you can already sign up starting with one dollar a month and the cool thing is when you sign up you can also join these Timmy Talks events but you also get access to the Discord. Uh, you're going to get a Timmy Talks pin of the channel, you know, I'll send it to you, you know, and all, all, all sorts of stuff. So uh, maybe it's something for you. Consider becoming a Patreon. I would really appreciate it. So you can have a look by clicking on the info card that's probably appeared uh, by now. So click on there. That will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page and you can have a look. And for now, I would like to, for one last time, thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And let's go. To the end scroll. Ich kann das Ficket zum Bakasik.